Shalom, I'm John Carney Roth and Anthony Hill. And welcome to Through the Eyes of the Elder discussion series. Uh, we're back here again, Anthony. It's been a hiatus for a little while, yeah. uh, but we're back. Yeah. As the Terminator would say, we're back. <laughs> I'll be back. But uh, anyway, uh, we have a new studio. It's been a long time in the making, and we're quite happy with the setup now. A couple of switches and everything goes on. No more setting up and tearing down. So it makes life a whole lot easier. And uh, we just really hope that you enjoy these uh, discussions that we have because they really kind of speak to the um, the difficulties many times of the walk that we have with Joshua HaMashiach. And um, not everything is always so cut and dry as we're going to kind of discover in some of this. Anyway, you have um, anything you want to throw in just before we get started with this message? Yeah, this um, for me... Um during this time of journey, I got a lot of time to reflect on the different mm. um, comings and goings in life that can sidetrack you off of this walk in the faith. And so as we talk in between this break that we've been on and um, the various trials and tribulation that we both encountered, and we talk about the different things that were going on and, and you came up with these different subjects and they all lead back to how we first started this series to me and my mind was the foundation laying a foundation always remembering what you were built on and where you were built from and what we're doing today is just an extension of what we already been trying to um relate through the uh word of Yahweh to all those that are, would hear his word. And so um, I'm just excited to be back. I'm thankful as always that um, you have counted me worthy enough to share this space and to share this opportunity. Oh, you're not going to do that to me. Stop you know? that already. And and, and <laughs> um, I'm just I'm just excited as always. Yeah, you know, it's funny. Uh, I don't, I don't want to belabor too long because we really got to get into this, but um, I kind of got really anxious during this last year of being away from this mm -hmm. and feeling kind of guilty, like, why is it taking so long to get back to this? You know, I want to get back to these messages, but it was like one hurdle after another. Building the studio was a lot more difficult than I thought it was going to be, as my wife can attest to. But anyway, being that said, we're back. Yes. Bless Yahweh and Yahshua for uh, bringing us back to this. So our the first one... Um, is uh, who is your teacher is what we're going to talk about today. And um, I think this is a really good subject because there's a lot of people out there to proclaim to be correct teachers mm -hmm. in the Messiah. And um, I would say that most people uh, who put themselves in that category are probably trying to do the right thing. Yes. Um, but unfortunately, we're all human. And we have our fallacies. We make our mistakes. I've been guilty of mine over the years, and we'll probably continue to have that. But at the end of the day, what we're talking about here, as you were saying, is, is foundational. Yes. Foundational. Anything that's on top of that, you know, can be a mistake here and there, bad judgments. We're human. We're fallible. But foundationally is what we're trying to really get to the heart of in this thing. Yes. And so... Who is your teacher is very, very important that you ask that question. Naturally, Yahshua is the ultimate teacher, but we're talking about here on this physical plane because we've seen a lot of teachers. We've seen them come and go. We've seen others that are still around, and um, they um, they teach some truth, but they also teach a lot of error. Right. And so foundationally is what you got. you got to have that foundation in order to really stand strong on that to know that if that teacher is beginning to shift and move you off of that foundation and slightly moving you towards another location, your ears have got to go up, but you got to know what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. So um, today we're, we've got a few scriptures. We're not doing a ton of scriptures like we usually do, but we got some few scriptures that we're going to elaborate on. And we've got three points that we're going to cover. And the first one is um, what I got out of the scriptures that you had chosen uh, which is this one's going to be in Exodus chapter three is drawing out the meaning of a real teacher, mm -hmm. drawing out the meaning of a real teacher. So 
Uh, we're going to start off in Exodus chapter 3, verse 13 through 15. And what it says is, Then Moses, which means drawing out of water, said to Elohim, Indeed, when I come to the children, the sons of Israel, and say to them, The Elohim of your fathers has sent me to you. And they say to me, What is his name of authority and character? And I think that's very important. The name is more than just a name. Yeah. It's about the authority and the character behind that. What shall I say to them? And Elohim said to Moses, I am who exists in order that I am will become. And he said, thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am sent me to you. Mm -hmm. In verse 15, moreover, Elohim said to Moses, thus you shall say to the children of Israel, the Yahweh Elohim of your fathers, the Elohim of Abraham, which means to be a father of many nations, the Elohim of Isaac, who is a laughing mockery, and the Elohim of Jacob, the heel-catching supplanter, has sent me to you. This is my name of authority and character forever. This is my memorial to all generations. So we're going to pause right there. And the idea here is talking about drawing out the real meaning of a teacher. Mm -hmm. and, and for me, when um, that scripture uh was inspired in me it was all based on uh they're going to ask you uh who sent who sent you to me and if you've been calling out for yahweh and somebody comes up out of the blue out of the ordinary because they wasn't expecting moses they was expecting something uh someone totally different to come and deliver them you know, and, and Moses is coming there as a regular person. And you know what? That's interesting just for a moment, um, because what strikes me about that concept is they said the same thing about Yahshua. Mm -hmm. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? They weren't expecting that. Unexpected. So go, go ahead. Yeah, it's unexpected. Yeah. But the teaching is something that answers something that I, I believe almost all of us have cried out within and it's something as though you know it's there because it hits something in there to, to alert you this is what you've been looking for you know now listen to it carefully because this this is going to answer what you've been calling out for and for me the start out here with the foundation is Yahweh from the beginning was getting his message together through different people, different vessels, uh, and, and the vessels that he used was uncommon to people. They, they wasn't people of high valor and, 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 and of that nature. Right. And so when he got Moses out there, Moses was just out there in, in, in the desert, just out there wondering, but you can imagine he's far away from his people and he's in a strange land. And all of a sudden, he see this bush burning. And he stops because it's something about that bush, you know. In life, it's something about things that happen to his life that just makes us stop right in place. And that's a teaching moment. But who is this teaching coming from? It could be a good teaching moment or it can be a bad teaching moment that can stir us in the right direction I can steer us in the wrong direction is who is your teacher? What are you looking for? Yeah. Um, you know, those moments, they happen to all of us where all of a sudden something pauses you and stops you in your tracks. Mm -hmm. And that is supposed to be a defining moment for you. And it's Yahweh's way of saying, I want you to stop and forget about everything that's going on and pay close attention to this event that just happened. There's a meaning down inside of there. You know, um, I think a lot of us don't do that. And I, that happens to me sometimes. Sometimes it's a very strong impression. Sometimes it's a very mild one. And so you can't quite tell what's going on, but they're still both the same event. You have to stop and you have to pay attention to what's going on because inside of there, Yahweh wants you to see something. Now, going back to the teacher part, uh, I've been around a long time, and every time I've had to go to some congregation, I've always have to test the teachers. 
mm-hmm. or the leader or the rabbi or whatever. And, you know, Scripture says, test the spirits of men to see if they are of Yahweh or not. Right. So when I walk into a place, I want to know who am I dealing with? Are you on the up and up or are you not? And if you're not, then I got to know how I'm going to be dealing with you. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I can give many, many stories, but I remember one place in particular, you know who it is. Um, the very first evening that I had walked up to this temple, there were leaders out front. I mentioned no names. It's not important. But I didn't know who was who, but I kind of figured who they were. And so the very first one reaches out his hand to me to shake my hand and greet me because this is the first time we're there. And as soon as we made contact with our hands, Yahweh spoke to me and said, this man is corrupt. Do not make any covenants with this leader. Mm -hmm. He's corrupt. And so much so, it was almost like I got a jolt in my spirit, not my body, but in my spirit. Uh Take the moment and understand what I'm saying to you. Pay attention. I'm alerting you in advance. You're going to have problems with this guy. Do not make any agreements with him. You can hang here, but don't make any agreements. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, you know what the story is. Later on, he did a whole bunch of wicked stuff. And eventually he got thrown out as a leader who was there for many years. Mm -hmm. So he got what was coming to him. Um, Not that I necessarily wish it, but I really don't have much pity on false teachers who try to portray to a congregation that they're on the up and up and that they're kosher and that they're teaching sound stuff. And unfortunately, I find that most people sitting in congregation do not know how to test the spirits of teachers. But it's important that you do that. Yes. Why are you going to waste your time there only to find out that you've been bamboozled for however long you were? And I see a lot of people who are scarred to this day because they put all their trust and confidence in a man or an organization only to find out that they got burnt later on. Okay. So you got to draw the real meaning of a real teacher, good, bad, or indifferent. Mm -hmm. It's your obligation and responsibility to the Messiah to not become a bondservant of somebody who's not teaching you correctly. Exactly, exactly. So Moses, just to finish my little point, Mm -hmm. Moses in this text, when you read the whole thing, he sees a fire up on the mountain. Mm -hmm. What is this thing up there? You know, my wife would have told me to go get a bucket of water and put it out. But the thing is, is that he wanted to go up there and find out what is this? Mm -hmm. And he had no preconceived notion when he went into that to decide, oh, it's going to be this and I'm going to make it fit that. No, that's not what a real teacher is. A real teacher gives you the full truth, undiluted, exactly the way it is. He's honest with you, tells you exactly how it is. And you don't come in trying to filter that and remold it and fashion it so it's malleable into something that is beneficial to you, which is actually to your detriment. So, you know, I would admonish the people out there, get tougher with wherever you're at. Mm -hmm. Because if he's really secure in what he believes as being truth, he's not going to get offended that when you come to him. He's going to have to respect you. And if he's a true leader of Yahweh, he will respect you, that you're a no-nonsense person, unlike many of the sheep that sit in these places that really just kind of take whatever is given to them. And that's not what we've been called to. We're coming into tough times. You're going to have to get a lot tougher when it comes to whoever it is you're going to follow. You got something you want to say? Yeah, um, just to um, kind of like seal on it a little bit on on what 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 I'm getting from what you're saying is, Yahweh is getting you ready. Exactly. You know, he's exactly. getting you ready. He's, he's trying getting to. Yeah. This is his first teacher. Uh-huh. He didn't send out Abraham to teach. Mm-hmm. He didn't send out Isaac to teach. He didn't send out Jacob to teach. Moses is his first teacher. And this was a teacher of many more to come. There was a pattern, as we'll see as we go through the scriptures, how it came all the way up until Yeshua. You know, well, they was teaching actually through Yeshua back then, but to actually manifested itself who was their true teacher all these years who was teaching israel 
how to um, teach the nations. Where did that separation come at in there to say, I'm a Catholic, or I'm a Christian, you a Jew, that's for you and that's for me. When it's only one Yahweh. Exactly. Hmm? Well, it came and out so, of Babylon. So we gotta, we gotta say, who was he getting ready to bring me to him? Where did he draw him out from? You know, and if you get a relationship with him, uh, as I, I want to say this real quick, because it, what you were saying, it just took me back to try your teachers. I was a person that didn't know him, mm -hmm. you know, but I didn't know it was him leading me to that people. When they say who sent, who, they're going to ask you who sent. Well, the question wouldn't ask to me who sent me to them, but the way that I found this teacher it had to be divinely given to me because I was in a prison where you couldn't right, right. find out who was who, you know, but through different, um, how would you say, intercessories, he made ways, huh? ways that wasn't even legal for the system that I should have that kind of uh, uh, communication to get to the person that he was trying to get me to. Which is divine intervention. Right. Yeah. And so it was never, he was getting me ready, you know, to see who he was because I couldn't see it on my own. But when I began to get to this person, it was like all the other persons that I've seen along my journey was so different than this person. And so it's like, now this person, he's the only one that's teaching like that. You know, and so when Moses get to Israel, he's the only one that's talking like that to when he gets to Pharaoh, Pharaoh asks him, who are you? Mm -hmm. You know, and who is this uh, Elohim who you talking about? Because I don't know him, mm -hmm. you know, he knows somebody else. So when somebody is coming to me today and they're talking about him, I'm, I'm going to pretty much know who he is because he got me ready already with his word. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. And so to me, is he started this thing in Israel. He started it with the Hebrews, you know, and he bought it all the way up. But it was in Israel. The promise was to Israel. And he started this teacher through them. So if anybody want to find him, they got to come through this same teaching if they want to truly find him. But it's so many false teachers along the way saying that they they are of him. You know, um, that's an interesting uh, way of seeing it. And what it reminds me of is what does Torah really mean? Mm -hmm. And what Torah really means is a journey. Yes. And it's a journey to righteousness. Mm -hmm. So when you're walking in the Torah, you're walking on a journey. It's a road that has a lot of twists and turns, ups and downs, you know, pleasant places to see, unpleasant places to see. But at the end of the day, each and every one of those twists and turns and ups and downs is metaphorical for life of what we go through. And each one of them has a lesson that teaches you something. And what it at the end of the day, what it's doing is it's teaching you how to walk through each of those things that you go through in a righteous manner, to see it in a righteous way. Well, without Torah, you can't do that. You know, you can't do that. So Torah is a journey, and it's a journey to righteousness because the psalm says, I think it's Psalms or Proverbs says, for your commandments are righteousness. Yeah. He who does righteous, he who is righteous does righteousness. Yeah. You can't, so there's no other way around it. So uh, anyway, you got anything else you want to no, say on sir, that? that? Okay. We're moving along. Yeah. We're moving along. Okay. So the second point, uh, that uh, that um, is in this teaching on who's your teacher, those who twist our words are not our teachers. Mm -hmm. Those who twist our words are not our teachers. And I don't know about you. Well, and I do know about you. But for me, I've had so many times where people would take something I say and twist it into something I didn't say mm -hmm. at all. I mm -hmm. uh, One thing that quickly just comes to my mind, I put out a video couple of years back, I don't remember what it was, but somebody who likes to kind of pick bones with me all the time um, wrote to me and said, you sound like a Christian. 
you know? And he says, because you said in this video, you said such and such and such and such. I'm like, well, first of all, I know me. Mm -hmm. I would never make a statement like that. Right. Yeah, you would no way, not even in my grave would I make a statement like that. So I went back to the video before I responded. I like to get my ducks all lined up in a row first before I just run my mouth, you know. So I went back to the video and I found the, the, the time the time frame within the video. And I listened to it word by word and I wrote it down exactly as I said it. And I wrote back to the person, I said, how did you in your mind get from this is what it says from this time code to that time code precisely quote unquote, this is word for word exactly what I said. How did you get from that which came out of my mouth mm -hmm. to that which you're accusing me that came out of your mouth? Mm -hmm. So when you call him out, then he says, oh, well, uh, I, I, I don't want to fight with you, brother. Uh, I just was trying to understand what you were saying. Well, now that's a different discussion. Yes. If I said such and such, and you think that translates in your mind, which is a perversion because that doesn't even come close, but you think that it means this, and now you write it that way and you say to me, is this what you meant? Because I'm not clear. That would have been a different discussion. But no, he outright said, this is what you said in the video. No, that's what you in your mind wanted me to say or imply in that statement. But that's not, you're not the originator of the statement. I am. Mm -hmm. So people like to twist your words and, and make them into something that their own crazy minds have concocted. And, and that's evil because it's bearing a false witness, yes. which is against the commandments, yes. you know, yes. and this person's notorious over the years for doing this. And I say shame on him. Now, I still dialogue with him when I can. But the final bottom line is I always have to seem to be correcting him on his accusations against what I say. So, you know, that's a different spirit. Mm -hmm. That's not from Yahweh. Right. You're not right. going to hear Yahweh say, I heard you say this, but this is what it really means. No, that's that he, he doesn't do that. So anyway, so this second point here is those who twist our words are not our teachers. And so you need to make sure that those who are trying to teach you or whatever, um, or people who associate with you, um, you're careful to make sure that they're not twisting your words into something that it's not. And so what you picked was Amos chapter 7, verse 13 through 15, and this is what it says. But never again prophesy by speaking or singing in an inspirational prediction at Bethel, the house of Elohim. For it is the king's royal sanctuary and holy place, and it is the royal residence. Then Amos, which means burdensome, answered and said to Amaziah, the strength of, which means the strength of Yah, I was no prophet mm -hmm. as an inspired man, nor was I a son of a prophet either. But I was a sheep breeder and a tender of the sycamore fruit. Then Yahweh took me as I followed the flock who are migrating, and Yahweh said to me, Go prophesy to my people, my flock of Israel, who will rule as Elohim. And that's verse 15. So what I got out of this is that Amaziah had twisted the prophecies of Amos, but he actually was an intercessor for Israel. You know, if you want to go back and read the whole story, we're not going to get into it. Right. So his words and his motives even were being convoluted by Amaziah into something other than what it, what what Amos was actually doing. Because earlier in the text, we see that Yahweh was going to destroy Israel on three different accounts. I think it was three different accounts. And Amos told him, no, stop, don't do that. Don't do that, you know? And so he was at, he actually got Yahweh to move his hand away from destroying Israel. But Amaziah twisted all that around and was basically calling him a false prophet and that his prophecies were no good here. You need to go somewhere else and go do it somewhere else. Yeah, exactly. So he was being rejected as a sincere man. So that's kind of what I was getting out of that whole thing, that people will take your sincerity, you know, 
assuming you're speaking actual truth, and they'll twist it into something else and malign it, you know, and, and, and impute something evil to you when that's not in your nature at all. That's not what you're doing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and when I saw you, the title that you chose for that one, it really, uh, I don't know how to uh, just bring this more um, openly to people that they don't twist what we're trying to do here or what I'm trying to um, relay. Hopefully Yahweh is trying to relay it through me that um, I'm not saying that I'm a teacher. I'm just posing a question. Who is your teacher? Mm -hmm. I had to examine that my own self, you know, and we're, and we're like I said, we started out with a foundation is we just walking through experience and perhaps people have been through some of the things that we've been through or going through some of the things that we experienced already and our experiences can really help them in the walk in this faith mm -hmm. you know and so you got to know who is sincerely sincerely desiring to have yahweh's uh yeshua speak through them you know and and so i have to go back and i and i think and i listen to a, different teachings you know because all of them profess that he gave them this word mm -hmm. and so I've, I've heard the teachings of once saved always saved oh uh, there's nothing you can do to um please him because you're not under the law so you don't have to really keep the law and they say they get all of this from paul but then i go and i read paul and paul say uh who are you you know that condemn the ones that are breaking the law and you do the same thing as that, that they doing. How, how are you going to be exempt from the punishment that you are subscribing for them to have and you doing the same thing and you exonerate yourself? How can you do that? That's what um, Paul wrote to the church in Rome. You know, and then you could go to Peter and Peter say the angels that left their first estate because they sinned. So if if if, if they going to get punished and they was with him but they sinned and you was with him and you sinned why well, you think that you're not going to get punished Right exactly you know and so who is teaching you this stuff and so I I just posed the question that you know you picked the, the subject but that was one that was really striking because I have to reflect on this constantly when I'm reading the, the enemy this is a spiritual thing that we're in so the enemy is right there too uh giving these certain revelations that people come up with to teach this sort of teaching and so just like we're looking at amos here okay amos got a teaching amos say oh i was a sheep herder i was out there i don't know i didn't pro profess to be a prophet I didn't profess to be anything, but Yahweh taught me this, and that's my teacher, and I'm going to go and I'm going to tell what Yahweh said I'm supposed to tell. And no matter whoever else already uh, occupying an office or say this, and if you don't know that Yahweh is telling me to say this, then you better re-examine yourself. Who is telling you to tell me not to say what I'm saying? You know, what comes to my mind as I'm listening to you is some things that happened to me years ago. And um, how can I say this? To the people out there listening, Yahweh, I could go on for hours with this. We don't have that much time. So let me break it down. Yahweh wants a kingdom of kings and priests. Mm -hmm. That's what you're being trained to be. Which means your sovereignty and what you're supposed to stand for comes under one banner, and that's Yahshua. Now, with that being said, there's going to be people, if some of you have not already experienced this, and it, this is a trap you got to be careful about. If you truly, really know what you have been called to, to and you're rock solid on it, okay, Places where you inhabit in the church, in messianic congregations, in 
uh, whatever, it doesn't matter. They're going to be leaders who have unclean spirits, unbeknownst to you, unless you got eyes and discernment to pick it up, which is what I'm trying to admonish people to do, whose job is to come to you and get you out of your calling. So in other words, if you know that you're rock solid and you know that Yahweh has called you be a priest, Malchizedian priest, okay? Seat seats. I cover that in the Revelation intro. It's on YouTube. Because the 144,000 are going to be the first main group that are going to become very obvious to the world. Yes. And they're going to be a severe threat. But they are Malchizedian priests. They're kingsmen, redeemers. They don't take no bull crap from nobody. And you can't take no bull crap from nobody. And the devil's going to come and try to shove that where the sun don't shine in your life. So what I'm trying to say is, take it from my experience, because it's happened to me, I'll relate two examples in a minute. These leaders are designed, not all of them, I'm just saying the ones that do this, are designed to, to scope you out of what kind of person you are and pull you off to the side and get you under their authority so that you can follow exactly what they want you to follow, taking you out of your calling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll give you two examples just to make my point. So there was a, I was on a expedition, I'll call it that, uh, years ago. And I fell into a, not that I gave up the Sabbath. I didn't give up the Sabbath. I still kept the Sabbath. I never fell away from any of that stuff. But I found out about this black church and it was a charismatic church, which I can't stand. But I went and kind of had a loose discussion with the pastor there. And I knew something about him that he didn't know I knew. And that was that he had come out of the Seventh-day Adventist organization, started up this congregation as a non-denominational charismatic, okay? Now, he, he was a very gifted speaker. I enjoyed listening to him speak. And there are many like that. But don't be fooled by that. Right. Okay. Now, I, I'm not trying to disparage his character. But I want to make that clear up front. I respected the man of where he thought he was going, even though he wasn't really doing a service to the congregation, but it wasn't malicious. But that's another story. So what happened was one day my wife and I were at work. I mean, you know, we had our own business and we're in the office and I get a phone call from this pastor. And I never heard hear from him other than when I would go sit in his congregation occasionally. And he says, brother, he says, pastor so-and-so, uh, I got to talk to you. I said, okay. And he says, uh, I had a dream last night. The Lord woke me up and gave me a vision. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he says, and you were in that vision, that dream. I said, okay. So he told me, I need to come speak to you because we got to talk about something. I said, all right. So he came to the office. He sat down on the other side of the desk and he's pouring out his guts to me, so to speak. My wife was there. And he's saying, in the vision, what the Lord showed me is that um, I want you to head up the Anglo outreach ministry from this ministry. Mm -hmm. And I saw you as the leader of that. Because from what I understood, he, he had a black outreach an Anglo outreach, he wanted a Latin outreach, I guess a Caribbean, whatever, you know. And uh, so I got what he said. So I sat there and I listened to him. And I knew right away that's not something I'm going to get involved with. Because you know why? Yahweh never told me nothing about that. Now, maybe he told him first, or somebody told him that first, which I believe is the case, not Yahweh. Um. But I didn't get any confirmation, right? So I'm sitting there and I'm listening to him. And meanwhile, I'm praying to Yahweh. I said, give me some wisdom on this because I don't want to offend the man. Right. He's, in the, he's been respectable to me. I don't want to be nasty to him. But so Yahweh said he gave me what the wisdom of, because I speak sometimes about this, all wisdom and spiritual understanding. When you're in a moment where you're caught in a situation 
And of your own wisdom and understanding and knowledge, you don't know how to deal with it. You got to pray to Yahweh and ask him to give you wisdom. Going back again, we're talking about testing the spirits of men yeah. to see if they're of Yahweh or not. So I said to him, I said, Pastor, I said, uh, I appreciate you coming here and saying that, but I don't see how that could possibly work. He goes, why not? I saw it in a vision. I said, I'm not, I'm not denying that. That's not for me to say. Okay. I don't have any doubt you saw something, whatever. I said, but here's the deal. It can't work. He goes, but why, brother? Why can't it work? So I'm going to tell you why. I said, you're a Sunday keeping pastor and I'm a Sabbatarian. And the two don't, the two don't jive. And he sat back in his chair and he felt so dejected. I felt bad for him because he was a generally nice man. I liked him. And he sat back in the chair and go, brother, oh, brother. He didn't know that I knew his background. I don't guess he figured I would look into it. I want to know who I'm dealing with. Yes. I don't care how gifted of a speaker you are. That don't mean nothing to me. It might be nice to listen to, but you're talking about your eternal destiny that you're putting your hand yourself into somebody else's hand. You doggone better well know who you're dealing with. So he says, brother, he says, I believe we can, we can sit down and we can talk about these differences and try to find a way to reconcile them. I said, the only way I can see it being reconciled is you would have to go back to being a seventh day keeping church. Mm -hmm. And then we might be able to talk. Mm -hmm. And he felt dejected. He left out of there. You know, he kept, if I remember right, he had tears in his eyes a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I know my wife did. And I really felt bad for him because it's like his dream was crushed because mm -hmm. he really believed. And you could tell when people are sincere that they really had some kind of a dream. They had an experience. You can't take that away from them. Question is, what is that source? Yeah. And so what I'm saying is the devil knows how to take. Maybe he had a passion for wanting to have an outreach and he saw the only white guy in the whole congregation. And he says, this is the answer to my prayer. And the devil could have spoke to him in that way. And it made perfect sense. Not to me, but to him. Right? You better know who you're following. You better know who the teacher is, who the leader is. In another occasion, a week later. Now get this, because I'm leading to a point. A week later, I go back to the temple where we were hanging out. And you know what happened? The rabbi comes up to me and says, I need to talk to you off to the side. Now, this is the same guy Yahweh told me not to make no agreements with. Mm -hmm. And he said, uh, I got to talk to you about something. I said, okay, what is it? He says, uh, I want you to be my rabbinical assistant in training. I said, come again. He says, I want you to be my rabbinical trainee assistant. I'll train you, you know, in rabbinics and and all this stuff, I said, you're not serious. He goes, yeah, why not? I said, well, Yahweh never called me to be a rabbi. He never called me to rabbinics, mm -hmm. you know, and to get involved in the congregation in that manner. So mm -hmm. I can't do that. Oh, well, you know, you could get out whenever you want. Now I'm getting out now, <laughs> you know, <laughs> because we ain't even going to get started. Oh, man, I. You, you gifted speaker, you're this and that. I said, no, don't, don't butter me up. You know, mm -hmm. I know my marching orders. Do you know your marching orders? Oh, yes. oh, Do yes. you know who's come into your presence? That's trying to take you away from where Yahweh's trying to bring you. Mm -hmm. You know, you look at the history of Israel and what is it? It's wrought mm -hmm. with a whole history of the heathen nations always trying to divert them away from Yahweh's commandments mm -hmm. and take them into idol worship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Father. That's and so, the, so you got to know who you are. Mm -hmm. And if you're not sure who you are, certainly don't put your hands into that until you've really tested the spirits of these so-called teachers. Yeah. That they're really authentic and on the up and up. And, that Yah and if he does propose it to you, 
at least go before Yahweh before you say yes and say, Yahweh, give me a confirmation, yes or no. Thumbs up or thumbs down. Mm -hmm. And tell the man you'll come back to him later when you get a confirmation. Because mm -hmm. if you don't, you're not going to get respected. So I say that because we're talking about those who twist as teachers what you say. Mm -hmm. And if Yahweh has said something to you, don't let them twist it into taking you somewhere else exactly. and giving you a different word. Exactly. And you can see the pattern that Yahweh is using that we established from Moses to Amos. Mm -hmm. The same one, you got to know who sent you. And, and Amos is declaring that Yahweh sent him. You know? He was somewhere else doing something else. Moses was somewhere else doing something else. But they want to know who sent you, and they're going to test you in every kind of way to find out, do you know who it was that sent you? Do you know who it was that got you ready with that message, whatever it was, to go tell that message to somebody? Are you going to let the enemy get in between that and stop that message which you were given? Who is your teacher? Right. And you know what? Um, even when you're following Yahshua and he speaks to you mm -hmm. and he gives you a word to say. I know for me, there are times that the words that he gave to me to speak on the spot was not what I was intending to say. Mm -hmm. And I'm like. I know what you just told me. Are you serious? You really want me to make this statement? And this battle goes on in the mind about, well, are you going to follow that teacher who just told you this? Or are you going to follow yourself as your own teacher? And then you have to make a decision. Uh -huh. You know, like I, I did an intro on the Revelation series. And I made some statements in there that I don't think to this day on the web you're going to find anybody right. who's made those statements still. And it's been up almost two years now. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I had to grapple with it because there was no doubt I knew what I heard mm -hmm. and what I was told to say. Mm -hmm. So do I go by what that teacher's telling me, Yahshua? Mm -hmm. Or am I going to now decide, I oh, know I'm going to be the teacher and I'm going to find a way to water it down where it's more palatable for people. Mm -hmm. You can't do that as a prophet. Exactly. You can't. And I think people have a misunderstanding of what a true prophet really is. Mm -hmm. It's not about calling fire down out of heaven and, you know, all the glamorous stuff you see with prophets and stuff. A real prophet, first and primarily, is bring the people back to the commandments, back to righteousness, which Yahshua being the standard. But then there's a protocol, which is the commandments that leads you to him mm -hmm. and defines what he establishes as righteousness. And if after all that, the pleading and pleading and pleading and people don't listen, well, then the prophet starts calling out prophetical stuff. But that comes later. That's that's not up front. So I think a lot of people got a misunderstanding of what a real prophet is. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, and most important, is bring the people back to the commandments. That is the drawing out of what a real Thank teacher really yeah, is. And he never moves off of that yeah, foundation. The commandments following all the way through. Obey right. him. Right. Mm hmm well, Ruka, Shem. Any other final words on that? All I can say is, who is your teacher? Who is? That's who the question. Who is your teacher? That and is you the need to stop and ask yourself that because nobody can come to you with a word that convicts you and you know it convicts you. You know, um, I look over there and I, I see how passionate they are about abortion and same-sex marriages. Yes, those things are wrong, mm -hmm. but then so is adultery and lying that they are doing. Do you omit those? Add all those in. Add all those in and, and then be a complete body. Don't just separate the body that you can have your pleasures, but you can accuse somebody else of doing sin. And then you over here and you sinning too. Well, what's your judgment? Well, the judgment is my infraction of the sin is not as bad as yours, so I'm not as bad as you. Sin is <laughs> sin, and, and grace, but grace do not cover sin. But we humans, this is the level we 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 work at, you know, as human beings. I covered that in one of the first John teachings that I did the series, 
And I talked about the different levels of righteousness, you know, and which one are we at, you know? And, uh, but that's what we do. And we do that so we can justify continuing on to do what we're doing and so that you don't have any remorse for the wrong that you're doing. I, I would love to take that position, but that word that's within me Can't. will not allow no, me to take that position. No. But the flesh would love to mm. take those outlets. But that's where I was delivered from. As Peter say, the dog has returned back to the vomit. <laughs> Why would I do that? You right, know, right. why would you go back there if you professing to be this person? Why are you still that person in, in pretending uh, uh, presenting yourself to be a different person when the whole world is looking at, oh, I'm a sinner, but I'm really not a sinner. Right. I'm a, I'm this righteous sinner. But them over there, those are bad sinners. <laughs> Come on. Who's your teacher? I think. I think maybe we should do a, a, a message sometime on uh, the dog that returns to his vomit. Yes. I mean, <laughs> somebody's going to listen to this and they're going to know that this this word is coming from Yahweh. If, if he got us together you. with this message, John. He yeah, got us ready for this. It took a while to get us ready yeah. to bring us to this. I had no idea he was preparing these things in your mind. We talk about oh, so much. I got a list like this yeah. in my phone. My, my wife knows. Well, I gave you the list. Yeah, you did. I got more <laughs> also I didn't put in there. And I'm like, all of these are good. Where do we start from? That's your and problem, right away, mine. Yahweh said, the teaching. Yeah. Doctrine is important. It is important. Because, what does it say? Mm -hmm. In the end times, which is what we're now kind of getting into, they will not be able to endure sound doctrine. And man, is that not where we are? Uh, we, we, we Why a teacher is so important, you better make sure he's got sound doctrine. Exactly, exactly. I'm, I'm telling you, he's getting you ready for what we will see. I was hoping he'd but, get you ready before he gets me ready. <laughs> but... but this thing is powerful about his teaching. His teaching started with Moses and he gave Moses laws and statutes and judgment that to this day still stands. But other teachers have came in there and say, oh, he took Moses away and now he's established another teaching and they try to hide behind Yeshua. But Yeshua say many come in my name. Right. Hmm? Right. And just and say that I'm the Messiah yes. and still deceive yeah. the many, mm -hmm. the majority. And so we know it's going to be some deception, but perhaps it's just one soul out there. Well, you know, coming back to this thing with the, the right teacher and all that, you know, it's kind of a side note, but it kind of dovetails into that because it comes down to foundation and philosophy. And we find that so many Christians are confused over the Torah. You know, because they like to say the Torah is done away with. You don't need to keep the Torah. That was for the Jews. They got all these cliche statements. But I think what they fail to understand is there's a difference between the law and the book of the law. Mm -hmm. So let me just paint a picture. If you have a teacher, if you have a teacher that's telling you that there is no more law, Jesus has already done everything for you, okay, uh, and you don't need to do anything. You can't lose your salvation. That's one kind of teacher. Okay. Then you got another kind of teacher, um, which I would say fits more into the Orthodox Messianic type of belief, believing in Yeshua, but believing that the book of the law of Moses with the rituals and Talmud added all into all that. Because that, even if you kept the Talmud out of it, and you just stuck with the book of the law of Moses, don't be following that. Okay? Because the rituals contained in the book of the law of Moses was on the outside of the Ark of the Covenant. It wasn't covered by the mercy seat. It's the Ten Commandments that were under the mercy seat where Yahweh sat. And you had one um, tablet here and another tablet here. These are the two testicles or testimonies of Yahweh who's sitting on top of that. It comes from his seed. This book of the law of Moses is out here. So to just keep it simple, the Ten Commandments. Don't make any idols. 
People like to make the cross and Jesus hanging on it. That's a towel symbol, you know? And I would just simply say people actually worship that. You know, Catholicism is usually the one that does it the most. But, you know, I'll say it this way. It's it's not the cross that bore the Messiah that's important. It's the fact that the Messiah was willing to bear the execution stage. Big difference. Total paradigm shift. Put your emphasis on what the Messiah did to lay down his life. The towel symbol represents death, sun worship, Babylon, confusion. Don't equate that as being equal to be worshipped with the Messiah. The next one is don't bow down and worship them. Second commandment. Third commandment, which kind of dovetails a little bit in with some of these scriptures here uh, in this context is don't take Yahweh's name in vain. And in vain in Hebrew means to make it of no effect. Well, how do you make it of no effect? The way you make it of no effect is, number one, you refuse to use the name. And I can give scriptures from the Old Testament where Yahweh says his anger is going to wax hot against the Gentiles who refuse to pronounce his name. So even the Gentiles are commanded to pronounce his name. But more than the name, it's the fact that we were reading here in the verses about the name that represents authority and character. Where does the character come from? It comes from the commandments. Because that's the righteousness. The way you know the character of a man is, how does he conduct himself? Is he for the commandments or is he against the commandments? Is he a lying, thieving, adulterer? And Elohim slanderer? And you can clearly see a man who operates that. So you don't need to try to figure that one out. But then when you see a man who has the character of keeping the commandments, as I just outlined it, that is a reflection, which we're told in the New Testament, that Yahshua is the expressed image and representation of the Father. Mm -hmm. And if he's living inside you, you've got to have that expressed image and representation inside of you. Mm -hmm. So how can you be against the commandments? And it defines what is righteousness and a righteous walk. It just means doing right. So what's wrong with not making idols? What's wrong with not bowing down and worship them? What's wrong with not using the pagan names to describe the creator who tells us in the Old Testament he does not want us using the names of the heathen to ascribe to his name, that he's a jealous Elohim, and he doesn't want to hear those names. But we do it anyway. And then the Sabbath. What is the one sign that marks Yahweh's people? It's not Sunday. It's the Sabbath. Another form of righteousness. Yahshua didn't walk in the Sunday worship. You know, he kept the seventh day Sabbath. It always has been on the seventh day, despite what history and religion tries to tell us. So, again, you got to draw these things out of a teacher. So when you walk into a joint, how do you know, how can you vouch for the quality of the character of the teacher that is running that joint if you don't know his history? You're just walking in blindly and you don't know what you're going to get. So make sure the teacher is teaching correctly. Make sure that what his words are is not a contradiction to the words of the Messiah, Yahshua has spoken to you. Yeah. Anything else you want to say on that? No, You're done. Yeah. With that point, that's it. That's it. Yeah. <sighs> Jeez. I would thought this hiatus would have kind of given you more time to... Oh, we can go on and on. There. But, but you just told me you're done. We just, All right, we're going to go on. Right now. We're going to go. <laughs> All right, so point number three. Point number three, you came up with Acts chapter 10, mm -hmm. uh, verses three through six. And the the... What I got out of what you chose is, can you hear what Yahweh is telling you? Now, we kind of hashed that mm -hmm. a little bit, but can you hear what Yahweh is telling you? And, you know, everybody really shouldn't stop here, but it's, since it's here, just real quick, everybody wants to get a word from Yahweh. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about somebody we knew that wants to hear directly from Yahweh. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that's not an easy thing to do. Mm -hmm you got to pay some kind of a price over an extended period of time building that character where Yahweh can trust you with the audible word. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, so he's frustrated because in all these years, he's not been able to hear Yahweh's word. But everybody out there, and I don't blame anybody, this should really be the goal. We all want to hear a word. So when you get to a place in your walk where you can hear the word from Yahweh yourself, why do you need to go sit in a congregation? I'm not saying don't sit in a congregation. Hear what I'm saying. This is about knowing who you are as opposed to what teachers claim to be. Right. And if there's a contradiction, you better know that there's a contradiction. So let's read this, then we'll get into it. I just want to kind of preempt that a little bit. So in Acts chapter 10, verses 3 through 6, we break in and it says, About as it was the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly as plainly as can be in a vision, gazing as supernatural an angel of Elohim coming in and saying to him, Cornelius! I mean, really got his attention. Verse 4, And when he observed by gazing intently at him, he was afraid to the point of trembling, and said, What is it, Yahweh? What does it mean? So he said to him, Your prayers of supplication and your alms, compassion towards the poor, have come up for a memorial as a recorded memorandum before the presence of Elohim. Now send men to Joppa and send you for Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodging as a guest with Simon, a tanner, who makes hides whose house is by the sea, he will tell you what you must do. Mm -hmm. From generation to generation, he just been getting his people ready. The seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He just been getting them ready. And here we are all the way in what everybody calls the new covenant. And he's still getting the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob ready to teach his word. And right here, he's gotten Simon Peter ready. He's prepared him with the word. But Peter is in Joppa, up on the rooftop, praying and fasting. And the Bible say a whole sheet covered the heavens and dropped down to him with all kind of animals in it. And say, rise, Peter, eat and slay. Now, at the same time, he's over at a Gentile house telling the Gentile where to go and who to ask to, the street to go to, the house number, everything. Just telling him, sending him there. The angel could have taught him right there. Why did he have to go to Peter? Because Peter had that word that Moses had, that Amos had, that all that Jeremiah, Isaiah, all of them had these words that they had to do. Repent. They've been trying to get them to come back to Yahweh all the way through the generations. And here is Peter up there, and, 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 and the voice out of heaven says, rise, Peter, eat. Peter said, no, I never done it. How many people is going to say no when these false teachers come and tell you to do something you know you never mm -hmm. done and you was taught not to do? Mm -hmm. How many times you going to go, John, you said for yourself a few minutes ago, and the, the, the pastor came and asked you, to do something that you knew you've been told not to do, to go into this sun worship. You said, no, never done that, mm -hmm. because you wasn't prepared to receive what he was bringing no. to you. No. But Peter is getting prepared that something is coming to him and wouldn't don't be no food. He was talking about a different people who you had been rejected for years. I done cleaned them up now. You can receive them. How many people are being excluded from this word because we deem them unclean? Excluded from this faith because we teach them unclean. They won't even go out there and, and talk to the ones that need to hear the word that's begging for the word because they got to come inside their building to get the word. Mm hmm. hmm? All their messages that they put on the TV and on the radio is to tell one another that you are right and you know you're not all right. You're doing all kind of right. unclean acts out mm -hmm. there and the unclean people can see you're doing it because mm -hmm. you got to go out there with them to do it. Right. Getting Peter ready. Generation to generation. Started with Moses. We, we, we just picked a few. Moses, Amos, and we all the way to Peter. But he's using the same process. He's getting his word ready with 
to put in vessels, clean vessels, not unclean vessels. And they and they get prepared to do something because they've been sitting there waiting on a word from him. And he give Peter this word. And when he wakes Peter up, he say, now you go down. There's three men down there. Hmm? He didn't say three Gentile men. He said three men down there. And they wait on you. He said, you go, go with them doubting nothing. And Peter had to go into a, a house that he would have never went in. Mm -hmm. hmm? I'm taught. I've been taught. I was raised up in a faith. You better not go into those. <laughs> those heathen houses <laughs> you make them come outside the house <laughs> you better not hug them you better not even acknowledge them as your kinfolk or your friend or you are a sinner that's the way i bought in mm. and they still teaching this but yahweh taught me something and he showed me for he took me all the way back to that prison cell when he visited me and I didn't know him and I didn't know that was him, but it was something about how, how that voice spoke to me and he began to show me different things. And he has been preserving me to this day. All I hear, all kind of bait coming from the enemy to get me to come off of this way. But I know who my teacher is. Who is your teacher? Yeah. Um, Joppa's interesting, been there. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's funny because the, the very house where Peter was staying um, is right along the ocean, the Mediterranean. And it's up kind of up on a cliff a little bit. And if you go just kind of around the corner from that just a little bit, you'll see what used to be a, a port mm -hmm. there where ships would come in. And um, during his time, um, it was very much a pagan society. there. A lot of Gentiles, Romans and stuff. And in the past, they used to actually take a female virgin. And there, if I'm not mistaken, I think the edifice is still out there. There's not much left out in the water. But I would say about 100 yards out, something like that, there's a, there was a post in the water, like a pole or something. And they used to strap a female virgin out there and mm -hmm. sacrifice her. I, I think it was to the ocean gods or something. I'm not sure. So anyway, the point is it was a very paganistic society exactly where Peter was staying at the time. So that text is interesting where he's talking about, you know, Gentiles that are unclean because it's very much that's the society where he was at at that time. Mm -hmm. The other interesting thing is, is that um, Cornelius who was not an official believer, I would say, at the time, but sort of, um, was a man that recognized who was a true teacher. And he wanted to know that. And teacher. he wanted to know that yes. teacher. Yes. He said, what did he say? He says, I'm a man under authority also. Mm -hmm. So if I, you know, and I've got authority over other men. And if I tell them to go, you go here, you go there, they go, mm -hmm. you know? So he understood the concept of authority. Mm -hmm. But what we're trying to get across is not submitting yourself to the wrong authority. Now, I do want to say something, and that is just because you're in a place where you're hanging out um, and it's not an ideal place, you can learn a lot from being there. Mm -hmm. You can learn it a lot more by not submitting yourself to things that you know you shouldn't do. Right. And then when Yahweh's done teaching you whatever teaching he's got to teach you there about those kinds of lessons he'll move you on to something else mm -hmm. but extract whatever meanings you can get from it while you're there uh, that's what i've always done wherever yeah. i've gone I, the first thing i do is i scope out what kind of unclean spirits inhabit this joint mm -hmm. you know so that i know exactly who's who who's what what they're doing what the agenda is what the uh formalities are and all this other kind of stuff uh, and so I compartmentalize all that. Uh, and then I know how to deal with it when I have to deal with certain individual people. It's not that everybody's bad. It's just certain key people are the uh, the gatekeepers, I call them, you know. But in, the, in this series of texts, also what I wanted to kind of focus on just briefly is that faith without works is dead. Mm -hmm. Faith without works is dead. If Yahweh is telling you something and you're clearly hearing it, You've got to go do whatever it is he's telling you to do. Now, it also is also very important to understand 
when is he telling you to do it? Because mm-hmm. I see a lot of people that say they get a word from the Lord, you know, mm-hmm. and like a bat out of hell, they go straight out and they do it right away and it all falls apart. Mm-hmm. And then what does it do? It ruins their faith mm-hmm. because they were certain they heard from them. So how come it didn't work out? Well, like I told one person, I said, did he tell you what the time frame for this is? Well, you know, you got a good point. I didn't think about that. I said, well, maybe it's a month from now. Maybe it's a year from now. Maybe it's five years from now. Mm -hmm. He didn't tell you? No. So you just decided it was now imminent Mm -hmm. and you're going to go do it now. Did you see all the elements converging together where it made sense that you were supposed to do it now? No, I didn't see that. I just thought that he, because he gave it to me, it was to be done now. But he didn't tell you that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And this is what a lot of people do. They, they make mistakes. Yeah. So then they start questioning, what am I, am I hearing? Mm-hmm. And who's telling me that? Mm-hmm. Did I really hear from Yahweh? Because if I did, why did it fall apart? It must have came from the evil one. Yeah. No, maybe it's just your interpretation or your perception of what you thought you heard. And, what and you, you didn't really want it to do. And what you wanted to do which is nothing wrong with that, but do it in making sure you're in conformity Mm -hmm. to the time frame in which he's telling you to do it. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like this, you know, we got this new studio built and I'm thrilled to death that we're doing this like this. It's so much easier, but I wanted to get this done six, seven months ago. Mm -hmm. We'd be videotaping. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm, I'm arguing with Yahweh and go, why are you dragging this out? Why is this taking so long? This is not really that complicated, but it got complicated. Mm-hmm. And I was getting frustrated and wore out from getting this, this uh, thing that was getting in the way and this problem and that problem. And I'm like, but everything in its order and in its time. Mm-hmm. What does the scripture say? Be anxious for nothing. Yeah. You know, be anxious for nothing. But I was anxious. Mm-hmm. And once you get into a state of being anxious, you're now in the flesh. Mm-hmm. You're now in the flesh. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes just Yahweh wants to teach us patience, patience. long suffering, yep. you know, and believing that when it's time for it to happen, he's in control of it, not yes, you. Yes, exactly. So what are you hearing mm-hmm. from the teacher? Yes, you know, yes. what is Yahweh telling you? Yes. So. That's what I got to say on that. So we're kind of into the closing comments now. So I'll throw it to you. Um, whatever closing thoughts you got on this. Yes, I, I would just like to just keep going with it, John, about the teacher. Who is your teacher? Know that he's a teacher truly sent from Yahweh. And Yahweh has already set laid his foundation in place. And I know uh, for me, I like to use the word Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob seed. And uh, this is the spiritual word of Yahweh, his promise to Abraham. And Abraham is the father of faith. If you believe uh, that Abraham had faith, and then you believe in Messiah, Yeshua, who Abraham say he saw, and the promise to Abraham that he would be the father of all nations, and so when I sit here today and I and I can relate to Peter, I can relate to Amos, I can relate to Isaiah and Jeremiah and Habakkuk and, and go on and on and on and all the, the various kings, good and bad. And I can see and hear his word going to them. And yet I can I cannot put myself above any of those that didn't obey or stumbled and fell and, and, and say today, oh, Adam should have known better. Well, what's your excuse about what you, you you know today because you see his mistakes and you still make the same mistakes. Who is your teacher? Are you yeah, learning yeah, yeah. from that teaching? That's right. You know, and, and, and so all through the years, his pattern has not changed. He's been getting people ready. And he's gotten us ready. And I'll say, okay, Anthony, who you think you is? Huh? I'm a seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob through Yeshua. He's brought me into this thing and made him my father. Don't care who don't like it. 
don't care who don't agree with it, but that's his word that he gave me, right. and I'm going to hold on to it. So when I sit in a congregation, they try to call me a Gentile, you call me what you want to call me because you're talking about the flesh. Right. What am I in the spirit? Exactly. He said he made two one, mm -hmm. hmm? and it's only one faith. And if I'm in it, then I belong to him, and I'm with him. Who is your teacher? Who is your teacher? We got to be speaking to somebody. They got to be hearing us as when he raised us up and get us ready to bring something out. And like you say, we've been out on and You've been trying to go, but you had to wait. And you was obedient and you waited till he and while you was waiting, he was getting you ready. You say you got a whole list of stuff. He done, he done got you ready with a book. Yeah, he did. Huh? Yeah. And now he's ready for you <laughs> to be like a well of water. Mm -hmm. It's spewing out now. And, and we sitting here and it's just spewing out. Who is your teacher? Bringing people into questioning. We walk, this is just our experience. We're not here teaching. We're talking through experience, the various things we had to endure on this journey. And so we're closing, just asking people to reevaluate your teaching, your doctrine. Is it sound? Has it kept you? in this faith has it kept you on this journey has it kept you kept you waiting on the promise as the book of hebrews describes so many more did uh before us it calls them a great cloud of witnesses and it started out with abraham by faith by faith by faith and so we're here today we're sitting by faith that we know who our teacher is and though he tarry we know he's coming and we're going to wait on him. Praise Yeshua. Praise you. Baruch Hashem. Um, well said. So, two things that, that come to my mind in closing quickly. Um, I want to talk to the teachers out there because mm -hmm. you're the gatekeeper. Yes. And you know you are. Yes. And there's not a condemnational statement that I'm going to make. Um, trying to find your way on this road as a teacher is not an easy thing. Been there, done that several times. Mm -hmm. And I know there's a tendency to want to control your congregations to flow in a way that you think it should flow. And I'm not necessarily against that as long as it's sound doctrine and how are you doing that. So it's not about that. But what I do want to say is I'm hoping that this discussion as elders yeah. will maybe pause you to stop and think about is my priorities in the right order? Am I really doing my people a service? Yeah. Um, am I not teaching them what they really should be taught and preparing them for what's coming? And when you see a number of people in your congregations that are very weak in the faith and they're constantly coming up for prayer and they don't ever seem to get past their issues, um, that can be hard. Mm -hmm. But you have an army that you're supposed to be moving from one piece of ground to the next mm -hmm. and taking control over that ground. Yeah. And if you're too much into protectionism, um, especially if it's Nicolaitan and, and its structure, which you're going to get into that right now. Um, Yashua said that's a doctrine he don't like. Mm -hmm. And I think we all need to be a committee of one to make sure we're not practicing Nicolaitan type of doctrines in a congregation as a leader. Now, with that being said, this whole COVID thing has made so many people stir crazy and made so many people like recluses. And I want to just say to the people out there, if you think this didn't, if this scared the hell out of you, mm -hmm. imagine what this is leading to. Mm -hmm. As you said earlier, Yahweh is preparing a people. And part of this preparation is exactly what this COVID thing is designed to do. It's about oppression. I said it in the last video, I think it is, we did last year. Mm -hmm. um, I had said that this was a dry run to bring everybody under control, to take away your sovereign rights. And if you want to go back and see it towards the end of the video, I said it then, 
this is what it's turned out exactly to be. Now, this is not uh, a thing about COVID. I'm just simply saying that if you think it's bad now, imagine how much worse it's going to be when the full effects of this and what they're trying to do with this model that they're creating when the beast comes on the scene. Because when the beast comes on the scene, he ain't going to have no mercy. There's still a lot of mercy right now in this COVID mandates and the things that they're trying to concoct and trying to gently twist your arm behind your back to get you to conform. Okay. Actually, uh, I saw a video um, where a guy was going around getting people to sign paper with their name and everything saying that they want to lock up people that refuse to get vaccinated. And it's amazing how many people are saying, yeah, they should be criminals and they should be locked up. Now, this is this is a terrible thing, you know, especially when this goes against the the uh, Nuremberg Code, you know, which we're a part of. But I don't want to get political because I'm not a political guy. My whole point is this is a teacher, too. You're either going to learn how to conform to what the system is pressuring you to conform to, or you're going to conform to what Yahweh is trying to tell you. Because what does it say at the end? He says about Babylon, come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins and transgressions. And that means the punishments that comes on the nations and those that are in them who are part of that whole conglomerate, that whole uh, system. So in some small way, that's what we're trying to do today. Call your attention to who is your teacher? What are they telling you? What it, versus what is Yahweh telling you? And if Yahweh hasn't told you anything yet, I really suggest you stop listening to everybody and get on a one-to-one -one conversation with Yahweh, and you're not going to move until he gives you a word of instruction so that you know clearly what that voice is telling you so that you don't have to be in disarray anymore when you hear somebody else telling you something that's contrary to that. Amen? So we just want to thank you for joining us today on Through the Eyes of an Elder Discussions. We hope that this discussion, at least in some way, gave you something to think about. And until the next time, we'll see you then. Amen. Shalom.